The Kraft Foods Company, makers of lighter-bodied Kraft Oil, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. (laughs) The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. There's a Kraft product I hope you'll look for the very next time you go shopping. It's Kraft Oil, a lighter-bodied oil, the most wonderful oil ever created for homemade salad dressings, for baking, and for frying. No other oil is like Kraft Oil, perfected in salad dressing headquarters. A special superfining process gives it a lighter body, makes it blend faster and better with other ingredients. For superior results always, Kraft Oil is the oil to use. Get a bottle tomorrow. Well, it's a typical January evening in the city of Summerfield, and striding down the main street is the familiar figure of the water commissioner. There's a lot of bounce in his step these days, because since meeting the attractive Miss Grace Tuttle, his cup of happiness is overflowing. Trouble is, there's a drag in the bottom of the cup in the person of Miss Tuttle's brother, Sidney. I don't understand how a wonderful girl like Grace can have such a sponger for a brother. Oh, well, every rose has its thorn. But I'm not going to let her stick me for any more money. I guess I'd better stop in Peavy's and get some cigars. Sidney smoked my last one. Hello, Peavy. Mm-hmm. Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, I'll be with you in just a moment. It'll take your time. Yeah, very well. Two dozen aspirin, one and a half dose of bubble gum. What are you doing, Petey? Uh, taking inventory, Mr. Gildersleeve. Five rolls of sterile gauze, two bottles of Panky's Panacea. <laughs> this Panacea has been around here for years. What's it good for, Petey? Well, they say it's a nerve medicine, but nobody around here has had nerve enough to try it. <laughs> You care for two bottles at the price of one? No, thanks, Petey. And I'm afraid I can't wait for you to finish your inventory. How about some cigars and a box of candy? Very well. Calling on Miss Tuttle, I take it. Yeah. Come to think of it, just give me one cigar. You don't want your usual half dozen? No. Since Grace's brother came, I only get to smoke one out of six anyhow. You don't change. Now on, he isn't even going to get a cigar out of me. What a no-account brother. I wouldn't exactly call him no-account. He has accounts all over town. (laughs) I know. Including Peavy's Pharmacy. I'm sorry I brought him in here, Peavy. He's embarrassed me with all of my friends. Sponging, borrowing, pretending he left his wallet at home. Well, he's a likable fellow, and you can include him in your income tax. What do you mean? Well, you can marry his sister and count him as a deduction. Yes, yes. Here's your one cigar and the candy for Miss Tuttle. Yeah, thanks, Peavy. Now, what are you taking, Brother Sidney? A ten-dollar bill? Peavy, he's borrowed his last dollar from me. Mr. Gildersleeve, it's hard to cope with a man who lives by his wits. Well, I can match wits with him. Now, I'll admit he's a smooth operator, but I wasn't back at the barn when they passed out the brains. <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> I hope Grace's brother isn't here. Well, if he wants to borrow anything tonight, I'm the one who left the wallet at home. Hello, Throckmorton. Hello, Grace. Come in. Thank you. Let me take your coat. Oh, I'll take care of the coat. You take the candy. Here. Candy? Throckmorton, you brought me candy just last night. Well, as I remember, Sidney ate the box of chocolate-covered cherries. Said he was looking for a caramel center. <laughs> Sidney loves your candy. Yeah, I can see that. Is he home tonight? He's dressing to go out. Good. Yeah, I mean, nice night for it. But he said he wouldn't think of leaving without seeing you. Uh-oh. That you, Throck? Throck. Hello, Sidney. You have a cigar? Yes, I have a cigar. Shall I take it into him, Throckmorton? Huh? Oh, yes, well, sure, take it along. 
Here you are, Sidney. And I'm afraid it's Throckmorton's last cigar. Oh, isn't he smoking? I'll say I'm smoking. He has my cigar, and I haven't even seen him yet. Oh, my favorite brand. Uh, get Brock's lighter for me, will you, Sid? You already have it. You borrowed it last night. Oh, yes. Well, here it is. Scott Morton, you and Sidney amuse me. You're just like a couple of fraternity brothers. Oh? You're always borrowing things from each other. There's such a wonderful spirit of give and take between you. you know, I've given about as much as I can take. <laughs> well, how do I look? Sidney, how handsome you are. Irresistible, huh? <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> You know, uh, I haven't seen that tie before. Oh, I bought it to give Throck for Christmas, but I liked it so well, I gave it to myself. <laughs> well, thanks for the thought. Sidney has a date with a new girl tonight, Throck Morton. Yes, indeed. Wow. New girl? Sidney has gotten acquainted around town in a hurry. Well, he has you to thank for that, Throck Morton. Yes, I owe Throck a great deal. Uh, say, I didn't get to the bank today. Did you have a loose ten-spot, pal? Uh, sorry, pal. I left my wallet home tonight. What? You're taking my sister out and you don't have any money? Well, we don't have to go anywhere. Well, but Throck, when a fella has a date with a girl, he doesn't dare go out without some money. Imagine going on a date without any money. Well, like Grace said. Oh, I know. You're going to stay here and spend a cheap evening. No, look, there's nothing cheap about me. But you said you didn't have your wallet. I don't have my wallet, but I have some money here in my pocket. See? Oh, thanks. I'll just take the ten. You keep the ones. Hmm, trapped again. Good morning, Leroy. Hi, Unc. Good morning, Bertie. Good morning, Miss Gillsleeve. Waffles are about ready. Hey, you got home early last night. I heard you when you came in. Well, I was disgusted. With Miss Tuttle? That brother of hers. He still giving you trouble, Miss Kilsley. Put the bite on you again, huh? For ten dollars. I don't know how he does it. It happens so fast. I don't know why you put up with him, Monk. If I were you, I'd quit going to see Miss Tuttle. Leroy, your uncle ain't gonna give up the goose just cause her brother takes the golden eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Bertie. Miss Tuttle isn't responsible for what her brother does. I'm willing to take the bitter with the sweet. You think she's pretty sweet, huh? Leroy, she's a wonderful girl. Now, I'm not going to let anything come between us. Where's the morning paper? Right here. Here's your hot waffles. You're good. I just glanced through the paper while the parquet is melting. Yes, sir. Yeah, nothing much in the headlines. What's this? Who? No. Miss Gilsey, what you staring at? You look like you've seen a ghost. <clears throat> Mr. Gilsey, can't you get your breath? What's up, Unc? Leela's back. Who? Leela Ransom. Mrs. Leela Ransom's in town? You says Mrs. Leela Ransom of Savannah has come north to spend the winter. That sounds like Miss Ransom, all right. <laughs> Paper says she's opened her house. I didn't know that. Well, you haven't been down that street since she left. From this picture, Leela hasn't changed much. Hmm. <laughs> Have they got her there in the paper? Right here. My, my, don't she look pretty? Uh, Leela always loved those frothy outfits. Is she going to wear that here in the winter? <laughs> this picture was taken down in Savannah, no doubt. That woman is really something. What's that she has on her head, a flower bowl? <laughs> That's a picture hat, Leroy. Leela always looked great in those. There goes Miss Tuttle. What? Yeah? Hello, Mrs. Ransom. Goodbye, Miss Tuttle. <laughs> no, wait a minute. I wouldn't think of giving up Miss Tuttle just because Leela's back. I haven't seen her for years. She's just a memory. She means nothing to me. <laughs> okay. Miss Gillsleeve, you and Mrs. Ransom were engaged. Whatever feeling I had for Leela is gone. It's over the hill. Water under the bridge. Old hat. Some of the old hats are the best hat. <laughs> no, but Leela's not for me. She's nothing but a disturbing influence. Yeah. 
She didn't see fit to let me know she was coming to town, and it's just as well. I would have been obligated to call on her. You ain't going to? Certainly not. She isn't going to get me in a tizzy again. Excuse me, Lee Well, then where are you going? Well, I just remembered an early appointment downtown. Mr. Gilsey, you forgot to eat your waffle. Well, yeah, well, I'll eat it on the way. How about that? I'm walking down the street munching a waffle. Leroy, your uncle ain't responsible now. He's smelling the magnolias. There's no harm in walking past Leela's house on the way to the office. Even if it is in the wrong direction. No use being a creature of habit, going to work the same way every morning. And there's no use being in a hurry. See, her hedge has grown so tall I can't see if she's home or not. Yeah, maybe she isn't. Maybe the newspaper made a mistake. And if they have, I'd better check and report it. Why don't I part the hedge and peek through? Hmm? Shutters are open. And the shades are up. Hey, there's smoke coming out of the chimney. And where there's smoke, there must be fire. I don't see anything of Leela. I wonder if she's changed much. Boo! Whoops! Drug more! Leela, it's you! Yes, it's me! Well, well, well! Oh, Drug more, and I'm just tickled pink to see you. Why, George, I'm glad to see you, too. Uh, what are you doing peeping through my hedge? Yeah, well, I heard you were in town. I was passing by on my way to the office. And... You mean you were going to pass little old Leela by? Well, after all, Leela, you didn't let me know you were coming to town. There's no reason why I should come by, just to see if you were here. You cute little old boy, you. (laughs) (laughs) Ross Martin, why don't you come in the house a minute? There's no use of us standing out here with our noses poking through the hedge. Well, I might come in for just a minute, for old time's sake. <laughs> I'll meet you at the gate. Never mind, I'll just jump the hedge. <laughs> you silly boy. You come around now, don't you? Go kicking up your heels. Right, George. It's good to see you back, Leela. <laughs> Thank you, Josh Martin. Oh, I must order this squeaky gate. Yeah, things do get a little rusty. Oh, I imagine I have a lot of fences to fix. Who? What does she mean by that? Because when I came back, I didn't expect to find everything just the way I left it. Uh, come on in, Frank Martin. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just for a moment. I'm pretty busy these days. You are? Tell me about your girls. Oh, uh, Leela, I'm talking about the water department. Oh, I was only teasing, I think. <laughs> One reason I didn't write you I was coming was because I didn't know what commitments you might have. With a girl, I mean. Me? And you know Leela. I'd never for anything in the world even look at a man who belonged to some other girl. Leela's no trespasser. You wouldn't be trespassing, Leela. I'm not posted. You don't see any no-hunting signs on me. <laughs> Rock Martin, you're just as sporty as ever. Yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> Look me in the eye now, Rock Martin. Yeah, all right. Who are you going around with? Zeke. Zeke who? <laughs> I... Fess up now. Does my old beau have another girl? Rock Martin, you're not answering my question. Did you ask me a question? I was looking you in the eye. <laughs> I asked you if you have another girl. Me? No. <laughs> What's Grace got that Lila hasn't got? Except a no good brother. <laughs> Gildersleeve will return in just a moment. You'll never know how quickly you can stir up a batch of biscuits until you use Kraft Oil. Wonderful hot biscuits are on the table before you know it. 
because craft oil blends faster and better with other ingredients. Now, here's all there is to making tender, fluffy biscuits with craft oil. Sift together two cups of flour, a tablespoonful of double-action baking powder, and a teaspoon of salt. Then measure out a third cup of craft oil. With craft oil, it's easy to pour out exactly the amount of shortening any recipe calls for. Add milk to make one cup, and without stirring, pour both milk and oil into the dry ingredients. Blend with a fork until the mixture forms a ball. Now, this is where craft oil demonstrates it blends faster than any ordinary oil. Next, smooth the dough by kneading about ten times. Roll it between two pieces of wax paper to one-half inch thickness, cut with an unfloured biscuit cutter, and bake ten to twelve minutes in a very hot oven. Can you imagine a simpler way to delight your family with homemade biscuits? For this new Kraft Oil recipe, write to Kraft Kitchens, Kraft Foods Company, Chicago 90, Illinois. Kraft Kitchens, Kraft Foods Company, Chicago 90, Illinois. And tomorrow, be sure to get Kraft Oil, the most wonderful oil ever created for baking, frying, and salad dressings. Lighter-bodied Kraft Oil. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. He was getting along famously with his new girlfriend, Grace Tuttle, when he received a most severe but not unpleasant shock. Leela Ransom, his old flame, flickered into town. By the way, Bertie, Mrs. Ransom asked about you. That's nice. Of course, you wasn't going to see Miss Ransom. Well? At least that's what you said. You know, it just happened that... That's just what you said, Mr. Gilsey. You're going to be loyal to Miss Tuttle. That's just what you said. Bertie, all I did was walk past her house on the way to work this morning. Yes, and at high noon, you still wasn't at the office. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bertie, I couldn't be rude to her. No, sir. After all, she spoke first. Where'd you stay, Mr. Gilsey? Boo. Hey, that is... <laughs> yes, sir. And I bet you booed right back. <laughs> Who booed right back? I bet he did, Leroy. Who did? Leroy, don't be curious. Who's curious? I just want to know who booed who. You see, Bertie, she was on the other side of the hedge. Yes. Who was on the other side of the hedge? When she said boo. Who said boo? She did. Who's she and who said boo to who? She said boo to him, Leroy. Who's him? Me. Well, I got that pinned down. <laughs> now, who's she? Oh, my goodness. Mrs. Ransom. Yeah? Why is she booing you, huh? Because she knows you have another girl? No, Leroy, I don't have another girl. You did this morning. What happened to Miss Puddle? Well, I've been giving some thought to what you and Bertie said. What did we say? This morning, you gave me some pretty sound advice. We did? You suggested I not put up with Miss Tuttle's brother. Oh. And naturally, to avoid him, I'll have to stay away from Miss Tuttle. What a phony excuse for dropping a girl. <laughs> Watch it, young man. He ain't dropping a Leroy. He's just putting her on the shelf. No, wait a minute. You two make it sound as if I'm just doing this because Leela Ransom came to town. Yes, but you know I can't even turn around without Miss Tuttle's brother borrowing money from me. Yes. You know he's always taking advantage of me and my friends. Yes. So the fact that Mrs. Ransom came to town on the day I made this decision has nothing to do with it. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> What can I do for you? Yeah, I'd like a box of candy. Something for Miss Tuttle. You're buying Miss Tuttle an awful lot of candy. Not that I object to making the sale. You know, this is for a special occasion, Peavy. We're breaking up. How's that? I'm calling the whole thing off. This is my swan song. Well, then why are you buying her candy? Well, to soften the blow. Well, how about some cream centers if you're going to hit her over the head with it? <laughs> You know what I mean, Peavy. I'm just not going with her anymore. Now, I heard Mrs. Ransom is back in town. No, it isn't that. I just can't stand Miss Tuttle's brother. Uh, by the way, give me two boxes of candy. You breaking up with him, too? <laughs> this is for another party. 
long as I'm going by Miss Tuttle's, I may as well stop by Mrs. Ransom's, too. My, my. But I am through with Sidney. He's mooched off me for the last time. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I finally had to clamp down on him here in the store. He pays cash when he comes in here now. Yeah, I know. He gets it from me. <laughs> uh, here's the candy. Now, I'd suggest this box for the incoming Mrs. Ransom. It says, surprise assortment. Good. And this box for the outgoing lady. What does it say? Nuts, chocolate covered. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, before I go break the sad news to Miss Tuttle, I'd better fortify myself with a sandwich. Yeah, you know. Give me a Swiss cheese on rye and a cup of coffee. Swiss and Java coming up. Uh-oh. Here comes Sidney Tuttle. Well, Frog. Hello. Greetings, Mr. Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Tuttle. Here's your sandwich, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, thanks, Peavy. Having a bite, Frog? Yep. I think I'll have something to eat, too. Uh, let me have his check, Mr. Peavy. How's that? No, no, no. I'll pay my own check, Sidney. Now, Throck, if you offered to pay my check, I'd let you. <laughs> I haven't offered to pay yours. <laughs> oh, come on. Let me buy your lunch. Well, if you insist. But I don't like to be obligated. I tell you what. You buy my lunch, and I'll buy yours. Hey, it's a deal. Give him a cigar, Mr. Peavy, and, and give me his check. Very well. Mr. Gildersleeve's check is for a Swiss on rye, a cup of coffee, and a cigar. Well, thank you, Sidney. Don't mention it. When he orders, Peavy, give me his check. Very well. Now. Miss Peavy, I'll have the dollar and a half turkey plate, pie a la mode, and a couple of cigars. What? <laughs> Say, Throck, it just occurred to me, I'm coming out ahead in this exchange. Oh, no, you're not. I'm having a turkey plate for dessert. <laughs> That did it. I have to call off things with Grace. I wonder why she doesn't come to the door. Just a minute. Yeah, this is going to break her up. But if I don't go through with it, her brother's going to break me. Come in, Frog Morton. Yeah, thank you. Sorry to keep you waiting, but I hadn't finished dressing. Oh, you didn't have to dress up for me. This trip. <laughs> I would have asked you to come another time, but on the phone you sounded so urgent. Well, this is something that can't wait. Oh? Grace... I believe in putting my cards on the table. Well, that's always a good idea. Yeah, I don't believe in beating around the bush. Neither do I. No, I'm not one to be mealy-mouthed. If there's something bothering me, I come out with it. If there's something on my chest, I come out with it. If I have something to tell a party, I come out with it. That's right, Morton. When is this coming out party? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to prepare you. Let you know I don't hem and haw. Dilly-dally. Just what are you trying to tell me? Grace... I think you're a wonderful girl. One of the best. Thank you. I don't mind saying you'd make a wonderful wife. Are you trying to propose? No, no. I'm just trying to say I may not be seeing you for a while. Well, then you know the Major's in town. The Major? That fellow you've got framed on the piano? I was wondering how I'd tell you he's going to be in town for a while. Well, it's nice of you to defer to him. Look, I'm not deferring to anybody. Oh, there he is. I think he'll be terribly jealous when he sees you, but I do want you to meet him. Oh? I don't think he'll start anything, but in college he was heavyweight boxing champion, and he hasn't forgotten it. He was? His temper worries me sometimes, and he's such a huge man. Well, I don't want you to worry. Why don't I just slip out the window? Anything for the boys in the service. I left in such a hurry, I forgot to give Grace her chocolates. Well, I'm glad I didn't now. That brother of hers isn't going to eat his way through another box of my candy. Hi, Aunt. Yeah, what? Oh, hello, Leroy. What do you got, candy? Yeah. You bringing two boxes home? Who said I'm on my way home, my boy? Oh, I get it. You're heading for Mrs. Ransom. You bet. Yeah, hey, I think I'll go with you. What? I haven't said hello to Mrs. Ransom. No, Leroy. It would be the polite thing for me to do, and you're always telling me to be polite. Well, in this case, you could overdo it. Me? Leela and I have many things to talk about. And I'm looking forward to an evening alone with her by a nice, warm fire. Oh, 
Okay, I'll just go in, tip my cap, and say, Mrs. Ransom, thanks for coming north for the winter and thawing out my uncle. <laughs> I guess you wound things up on this tuttle, huh? Regretfully. But it was worth it to get rid of her brother, Sidney. Every time I called on her, he was in the parlor waiting to pounce on me, smoking my cigars and eating my candy. Yeah, but I liked Sidney. He was a nice kind of a bum. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, here's where I turn in, Leroy. <laughs> hey, Uncle, you want me to go in and get some oil for Mrs. Ransom to fix that gate? No. Go home. Okay. So long. So long, my boy. Well, Gillespie, you've burned your bridges. Now you're on the threshold of a new life. Leland and I can pick up where we left off. Well, maybe not there exactly, but uh, I hope she's home. Well, hello, Leela. Rock Martin, it's you back. Yeah, I'm back. May I come in? Oh, of course, but I must say I wasn't expecting you. Yeah, well, I know you like surprises. Uh, I hope you do, too. What? So who's smoking cigars? Oh, just a friend who helped me with my suitcase at the depot. Oh? Uh, Throck Martin, I wonder if you know Mr. Sidney Tuttle. Hiya, Throck. Oh! oh. Gildersleeve will be right back. Just in case you think all salad and cooking oils are alike, let me set you straight. There's one oil that's really different, and that's craft oil. Craft oil is produced by an exclusive craft process called superfining. This process brings you a lighter-bodied oil, an oil that blends better and faster with other ingredients. Get a bottle of craft oil tomorrow. It's the most wonderful oil ever created for homemade salad dressings, fine baking, and for frying. Remember, craft oil. Oh, Leela. At last we're alone. All alone. Throck Martin, I often wonder if destiny has anything to do with bringing us together again. If it does, I love destiny. <laughs> Oh, I thought you'd have been married and settled down long ago. Not me. Maybe I've been waiting, not knowing why. Destiny, you know. Mm. You talk like you haven't even looked at another girl since I've been gone. Lila, you know there's never been anybody in my life like you. Oh, you're just saying that. No, I mean it. I rarely have a date. I just don't have any girls to speak of. Not even one teeny weeny romance. Leela, believe me, there's nobody. Oh, uh, excuse me, Throckmorton. Now I'll answer the door. You go right ahead. I'll save your seat. Hi, Miss Ransom. Why, Leroy, how you from? Yeah. Is Uncle here? He said he is. Come on in. Leroy, what are you doing here? Well, sorry to interrupt, Uncle, but I thought you might want your wallet. Well, thank you. Where'd you get it? You want me to tell you? Of course. Miss Tuttle found it on the fire escape outside her window. <laughs> Why, Rock Martin. <laughs> Good night, folks. Great Gilbert's lead is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White. It's partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tepley, William Randolph, Mary Shipp, Shirley Mitchell, Byron Kane, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Done up just right, a delicious hamburger can be truly a gourmet's delight. A big deal in eating pleasure. Of course, just about every good cook knows that a dash of craft prepared mustard really makes a hamburger. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Craft mustard, naturally. There are two kinds of craft prepared mustard. 
Mild craft mustard if you like it smooth and delicately spiced. Snappy craft mustard with horseradish added if you like it zippy. Get both kinds of craft prepared mustard at your food store. Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on NBC. 